Now that we know how to find the optimal consumption decision for goods that people are willing and able to consume, we want to take a look at how those tools can help us to explore and examine and understand the consumption decisions that people make. And to do that more um, adequately, we want to understand about some different kinds of goods. One of the kinds of goods we look at, the most common kind of good, is what we call a normal good. A good that when your income goes up, you buy more of. And we can illustrate that through the indifference curve budget constraint analysis. A normal good looks like this. Here's our initial consumption optimum. We'll just label this as X2 and X1, and that's great. But let's say that you get a raise or you go find a job that pays you more. Well, you're not going to stay here because your income increases. In other words, your budget constraint shifts out. And if this is the case, and this is the normal case, this is the typical case that we see when people have more income, they are now inside their budget constraint if they stay here. This is no longer optimal. What people tend to do is they tend to move to a higher indifference curve. Call this indifference curve 2. And they consume more of X, uh, good X1 and they consume more of good X2. So you can see the optimal point is higher than the original, meaning we get more of X1 and we get more, or sorry, more of X1 and more of X2. This is a normal good, but not all goods are normal. Sometimes you buy things at lower incomes that you wouldn't buy if you had a higher income. One of the classic examples of this is ramen noodles. When you're in college, you buy lots of ramen noodles because they're really cheap. But when you graduate, you get a job, and you say, hey, I can go out and I can buy, you know, T-bone steaks. Or maybe you just go up to, to uh, hot dogs or something better than ramen noodles. Regardless, you buy less of those horrible, nasty old ramen noodles because you now have more income. Well, those ramen noodles, they're not normal goods. So our analysis here means, uh, our analysis needs to be looked at from a different perspective. Those goods that are not normal, we don't call them abnormal because that just sort of sounds horrible. Instead, we call them inferior. That's not so bad as abnormal. An inferior good is a good where as your income goes up, you actually buy less of it. So let's take a look at that inferior good. We're going to start off with our uh, very similar looking uh, depiction here of our income, uh, of our budget constraint and our indifference curve, but the indifference curve is going to look a little bit different. It's going to have a little bit different shape to it. And here's our initial optimum point. And when that raise comes along, we're going to increase the budget out to that red line, and our indifference curve it's going to look something like this. Now, I wonder if you can tell from the picture here which good is the inferior good. Well, let's examine that by finding our new optimum point, which is right here. And as our income goes up, we see that we buy more of X2, but we actually buy less of X1. So X1 is the inferior good because as our income rises, we buy less of it. We look at the optimal points, we compare the two outcomes, and we can determine if the good is inferior or normal. In this case, good one is, is inferior, but good two is normal. Now, those are the two conditions that we face when we have a change in income. But things are different when we have a change in price. When we have a change in price, the budget constraint doesn't shift out parallel to itself. Instead, what we see is that that budget constraint is going to be fixed at a single point, depending upon which, um, which good is having the price change. So let's first of all take a look at one of the sort of um, more ordinary circumstances, one of the circumstances that we're expecting to see. In fact, we call these ordinary goods. 
an ordinary good is a good when the price changes, that as when the price changes, you buy either more or less uh, depending upon whether the price goes up or down. It's just sort of the law of demand situation. So let's see if, what we have in this case. Let's say we've got this as our initial optimum. And the price changes. Let's say in this case the price drops for x1. Well, if the price drops for x1, that means given your income, you can buy more of good one. So that's going to shift the budget constraint out in this direction. The price of good x2 stays the same. So if all you do is buy x2, you're going to buy the same amount. You'll be on the same budget constraint, basically with a black line and the red line. This is where the two lines are anchored. But as the price decreases for x1, you can buy more of it for the same amount of x2 because the price is now lower. So an ordinary good would have an indifference curve that looks something like this, again parallel uh, to the original indifference curve. Here's our new optimum. And to some people's surprise, what we often see when the price of good, one of the goods goes down is that you can buy more of it. Well, that's not a big surprise. But you can also buy more of the other good as well. You buy more x1, but you also buy a little bit more x2. Why is that? Well, because you have more money in your pocket, relatively speaking. Your income hasn't actually gone up. You haven't gotten a raise. There's no more money in your paycheck. But as the price of one good drops, that allows you to buy more of it and perhaps more of the other things as well. So if the price of, think about it this way, if the price of gasoline goes to a dollar a gallon, you might not buy just exclusively more gasoline. You will buy more because you can afford it, but that's going to free up income for all of the other things that you would want to buy. So perhaps this isn't quite as surprising as we might initially believe. That's what happens with an ordinary good. And again, most goods are normal and most goods are ordinary. But there is a very odd and very theoretical notion of something that's not an ordinary good. Remember the definition of ordinary goods. An ordinary good says we'll buy more of a good as the price goes down. This is just the price, and that follows the law of demand. This theoretical sort of mystery good, this kind of unicorn of goods, says that as the price for the good goes down, you actually buy less of it. Now, that's a weird circumstance. Let's see if we can figure out what that looks like. And again, this is a pretty theoretical notion and it's one of these kinds of goods that economists would really like to find a great example of, but they really have trouble doing it. So here we're going to start off, like we have been. Here's our optimality. And now the price of good one is going to drop again, so that's going to shift our budget constraint. So there we go with a budget constraint. And now we see something that looks like this. We see the tangency occur right here, where the two lines are just barely touching. And even though the price of x1 has fallen, you buy less of good x1. You buy a little bit more of x2, but the oddity here isn't that the price of x2 is changing because it's not. The oddity is that the price of good 1 is actually falling, but you're buying less of it. That violates the law of demand as we've come to know about it. And this idea, this sort of mystery good has kind of a weird name to go along with it. This is referred to as a Giffen good. A good that violates the law of demand. So we've seen four different kinds of goods that we've been able to identify using in difference curves and budget constraints. We've seen the uh, normal good, the inferior good, the ordinary good, and this really mysterious Giffen good that economists are searching for, sort of like they're searching for the Loch Ness Monster. They haven't really found a great example of it yet, but um, theoretically at least, it should be possible.